Hi randoms, today I'm going to be answering the internet's 2019 10 most asked questions when it comes to skincare. And hopefully you guys will know them all because I'm not dead in your knowledge on skincare. I know y'all skincare freaks just like me. However, maybe there might be a question that you might not know the answer to. So without further ado girl, let's start answering them. Now these questions were provided very kindly by Miss Garnier USA, so thank you. And no, I haven't looked at these questions in beforehand, so this will be just my genuine reaction and my general thoughts an answer. So the first question is, okay, so this is interesting. What causes acne? All right, so to be honest, I'm not even that shocked that this is the most asked questions. There are so many people that are struggling with acne, one, and so many people that don't quite know what causes their acne and what doesn't cause their acne. There's a lot of confusion I see going around, and I get you because for the longest time, I have struggled with my acne too. Wait, I'm talking like I don't struggle with my acne anymore. I am very much still part of the sisterhood of the five pimples traveling pants. And I really do get your struggle because you think you nailed down what is actually causing your acne So you block it completely out of your diet or your skin routine and for one week It's all good. It's all like oh my goodness look at my skin is so cute Which is what is happening right now But then those pimples come back along knocking at your door demanding to stay on your face rent free But anyways, let's get to the juice to the meat So one of the biggest causes of acne is actually hormones and hormonal imbalance Have you ever thought about it? Like who gets the most pimples out of everyone teenagers and women? Women in their period or they're about to get their period. Why is that? That is because there is a hormonal imbalance. So basically your skin just goes crazy and so that is what is causing your acne to flare up. However, there could also be another cause and that could be coming from your skincare. So there might be some products that are breaking you out like maybe some moisturizers. I tend to find the really heavy moisturizers that contain maybe pore clogging ingredients like for example dimethicone, petrolatum, paraffinum liquidum. Y'all know I hate them. Well those tend to maybe in a big amount clog my pores and cause me to break out. Then there could also be the reason that you guys are not cleaning your face face well enough and properly because I know that some of y'all don't wash off your makeup as soon as you get home. Admit it. Admit it. I, just at least have the courage to admit it in this safe space. We're not here to judge. I'm not going to judge you apart from Smitty. Over there, Smitty, he's a bit judgy but he ain't going to listen. Okay? So anyways, if you're one of them people who doesn't wash off their makeup as soon as they get home and maybe you even go to bed with it, that could be one of the causes because makeup in itself does not clog pores and does not cause acne. I'm going to get that straight. However, if you don't don't wash it off, that makeup will eventually seep into your skin and then clog your pores. So in a way, makeup is clogging your pores if you don't wash it off. But then another thing that could also be linked to your makeup is they are using dirty tools. Now, honestly, I am guilty of this. I have to admit it, I have to come clean. Everybody raise their hands of who hasn't washed their makeup tools like brushes and sponges for more than a month. <laughs> But honestly, I do not have the time. But hey, at least I know I'm aware that makeup brushes are basically the heaven. And also sponges. They're basically the heaven for bacteria. That is where they really multiply and flourish. They have kids. They move in together. They cheat on each other. And they make kids with other germs. Honestly, like, they have no loyalty. They just free. It's like it's the 70s. <laughs> What am I even saying? But anyways, if you don't wash your brushes and then you do your makeup, when you apply the brush to the skin, all those germs are going to deposit on your skin and then that is what is going to cause your breakout. Anyway, so this was the short answer to what could be, once again, this earring, one could be causing your acne. And now, if in my opinion, my humble, honest opinion, if I do want to give you just one recommendation of one product that I feel has really changed my game when it comes to acne and has really noticeably reduced it, at least for me, is a salicylic acid. Now I have already got you covered sis because I've actually Oh my goodness, because I've actually made a video, a review on one of my favorite salicylic acids out there, which is the Nip and Fab one. But it's still very good, even though it has fragrance, y'all know it don't like that. And so we actually got you covered. I made this for you right here. Go check it out, the card right up here, if you want to learn how to treat your acne. Okay, so anyways, this was question number one. Honestly, how much time did it take to answer this question? <laughs> I'm just guessing this video is going to be quite long. So honestly, just get comfy, put on your robe, take off your make, take off your makeup, go make some tea, go get a snack, and then come back. Honestly, girl, how much time is it taking you? You back? Okay, good. <laughs> Let's move on to question number two then. What are the most important parts in your skincare routine? I am very happy that this is another question because honestly, skincare can be confusing, I get it. But honestly, the crucial, the basic, most important part of your skincare routine is actually quite simple. You really don't need no fancy 10-step skincare routine. All you need is, first of all, a really good cleanser. So what I want you to do is actually get a cleanser, simple drugstore, also if you got budget, if you got money, 
Annie, you can go a little bit more bougie. But the crucial thing that you need is this cleanser that is targeted for your skin type. Notice how when clapping my hands to get the point across. When I clap my hands, that means I mean business, okay? So actually, if you have oily skin, get a cleanser that is targeted for more oily skin. So what it's gonna do is basically gonna remove the excess oil, the excess sebum, and dirt from your pores if we're keeping them clean. If you have dry skin, then you really don't want a cleanser that's gonna be stripping and really harsh your skin. You want a cleanser that's gonna actually hydrate your skin a bit more. You know it's gonna give you that glow, it's gonna give you that you know, nourishment that your skin needs because your skin is parched. And girl, don't worry because you know I got you covered at all times. So I've actually made a video card right up here if you want to go watch it. That, in my opinion, is a foaming cleanser from CeraVe. And that is one of the best cleansers. It's also very cheap when it comes to oily skin. Now instead, if you have dry skin, I got you covered in this one as well because I've also reviewed the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. That is, as the word says and then suggests, it's hydrating. So therefore, it's going to hydrate the skin really perfect for dry skin. Both of these are from CeraVe. Like, like really CeraVe is coming for the girls like she's showing the girls how to do things around here in skincare uh-huh she's about to do what she's about to do and she's about to show what the girls should have did don't don't sleep on CeraVe speaking of not sleeping on things you know what you shouldn't be doing is sleeping on me it is really important that you get your six to eight hours of sleep a night however there's no need to sleep on me too uh -uh. Uh -uh. What you want to do is subscribe and turn the bell icon if you are interested in skincare. You want to learn what your skin really needs, what your skin wants. And you're not going to know that until I tell you what your skin wants. Honestly, because I know your skin very well. Uh-huh. Right now, I can see what your skin needs. It's actually talking to me. Uh-huh. Because I'm crazy and so I hear voices and skin is one of the things that talks to me. Apart from also like shoes and other stuff. But that's besides the point. But anyways, the second thing that is really crucial in your skincare routine and that you really want, it's not a toner. A toner is really not that important. It's not an essence. Once again, that's not something you really crucially need. If you want to go simple, the second thing that you need is a serum. I'm going to start clapping my hands once again because this is another point I want to get across. Now, there are many serums that you can choose from. Honestly, nowadays, there is a serum for everything. Every issue you might have, if you want to treat wrinkles, there's a serum for that. It's called retinol. That is really good. I've actually mentioned it in the five tips for anti-aging. That is one of the tips. Use retinol. If you have, I don't know, like acne, as I said before, the salicylic acid is really good. If you have redness, sensitivity, then vitamin C and niacinamide is what it's gonna do the job for you. Or maybe you have blue skin, which, I, I mean, I ain't judging. Like, there's nothing wrong with having blue skin. We're in 2020, hashtag we don't judge. So, if you wanna maybe get to, like, a more human skin tone, maybe, trust me, there's also gonna be a serum for that. Smurfs? We got you covered, honey. Uh-huh. The third step is moving on to a good, very moisturizing, moisturize, very moisturizing, moisturizing, a good moisturizer. How would you describe your personal style? Very personal. Because you guys, not only a moisturizer is gonna lock in all the serum and actually help it penetrate deeper into your skin so it's gonna be in turn more effective. On top of that, your moisturizer is actually gonna provide moisture to your skin. One of our other tips that I mentioned in my five skincare tips for anti-aging is the moisturizer is crucial not only for anti-aging but also for having good skin. And I'm actually gonna make a metaphor right here so stay with me, I need you to be focused. Uh-huh. Okay, so you, you know that if we don't drink, we die, right? Like, that happens to everybody. Oh, she passed away? Oh. Aww. Mm. All right. Well, you have to think of moisturizer as the water for your skin. So basically, when you're applying your moisturizer, your skin is going to drink it all up and it's gonna be moisturized. That's why it's called moisturizer. It honestly just makes sense. Even if you have oily skin, because I know that some of y'all oily skin people think that a moisturizer will clog your pores or maybe even make you look more oily, but trust me, girl, that is not the case. It has been proven by science that a moisturizer will only moisturize. It will not clog your pores unless, of course, it has a comedogenic ingredient, but actually for dry skin, but also oily skin, a moisturizer, in my opinion, that I really, truly love right now is the Cetaphil Hydrating Lotion. Once again, I got you covered video right up here if you want to go check that out. Now, in your morning routine, you know it's coming. I always say it basically in every video. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Try to that's right, SPF. You need your SPF if you're going to step outside of your house. No matter if it's cloudy, no matter if it's sunny, no matter if it's windy, snowy, stormy by Kylie Jenner. Girl, you gotta wear your sunscreen out. SPF 30 minimum. Don't go less, don't go lower than that because it's not gonna be effective at all. It's basically just applying it for nothing. And no moisturizers with SPF, that's not gonna be enough. You actually need a sunscreen. 
green. Closing the brackets because I've already said this in the video, but one last thing I'm gonna say, if you don't wear SPF, you're gonna get wrinkles and you're gonna get skin cancer. I'm, I'm just saying that. I might, ooh, I might be a little bit dramatic. My mirror fell <laughs> to the ground because I was that excited, but I might be a little bit dramatic saying that, but actually I'm low-key not. So wear your SPF, sis. Stop sleeping on your SPF. What, what, what is happening? Oh my goodness, I'm never gonna wear this earring again, like ever. Rude. Anyways, moving on to the third question, and that is, how can I avoid wrinkles? Okay, so this is interesting because that is very much my favorite topic in skincare, and now there is no way to really avoid wrinkles per se. However, there are ingredients to really reduce the wrinkles. I'm gonna briefly mention what they are. You want an antioxidant like a vitamin C in the morning, skincare routine, uh-huh. You want a retinol at night, as I mentioned, and then you also want to wear your SPF and a really good moisturizer. Of course, there is also both Botox and filler if you want to go down that route, you know, like <laughs> me. Hi. But anyways, moving along, question number five. I'm actually going to speed up the process because this is taking quite a lot of What should I do about my dark spot? Okay, honey, I know that's a concern that you have. Like, honestly, we've all been there. I've been there as well. And so dark spots could be caused, for example, by sun exposure if you're not wearing your SPF once again. And so the obvious answer for that to prevent the sun from furthermore damaging your skin is going to be, uh -huh, yeah. I can see you saying it. Right, SPF. And then you can cop back to the ones that you already have by exfoliating your skin, number one. So really, a salicylic acid is an exfoliator, and that is a BHA, but also an AHA, like a glycolic acid that could also, or a lactic acid that could also be very effective. Or you could also use a physical exfoliator. I personally don't like them, I prefer chemical ones, but both are really good, and that is really gonna take off the dead skin and that first layer where the dark spot lies. Anyways, moving along to question number six. This is another anti-aging one. How can I prevent aging? skin okay so once again there is really no way to prevent aging but I'm not gonna repeat the same stuff that I said before however I am gonna say the best way to treat your wrinkles I I'm sorry I have to say it is through surgery like a facelift or also filler where you basically fill up the skin once again if you maybe lost some volume because if you didn't know at around 25 when we start aging our collagen production starts to slow down and also the elasticity of our skin starts to be less elastic so our skin starts to sag and we also start to lose volume in our skin. And so with filler, you are putting back the lost volume. And so it's going to lift up the skin once again. Or also Botox, which is basically going to freeze the muscles. And so prevent you from getting more wrinkles, but also reducing the appearance of the already existing wrinkles. So I have to say there is a limit to skincare. Don't be thinking that once you buy your retinols and your vitamin Cs, you're going to be looking 20 again. Unfortunately, that is not the reality. That It, it, it is really sad. I'm actually getting emotional thinking about it. But it's honestly, aging sucks. What? Why is that a thing? Like, can we not just be youthful forever? Goodbye. However, girl, through skincare and also maybe through a little bit of maintenance work, a little bit of the filler, a little bit of the Botox, a little bit of that cute little finessing, you can really age gracefully and not look your age. But honestly, if you just stick to the skincare that I told you, you're gonna look way better than the average person because trust me, the average person is not here sitting through watching this video. Your skin is gonna be a lot better throughout your life than the average person because they don't know and they don't honestly care. Honestly? too bad for them. Better for us though, because we gonna be having cute little skin for all the rest of our lives and they won't, so. I don't even know why you're here. Security! Can you please escort this lady over here, Al? I really have a lot of sass with this. I like it. I'm actually gonna keep wearing it, even though it does stick to my face. Hmm. Okay, so question number seven is very interested. What's the best way to handle sensitive skin? Honestly, if I have to be honest right now, just don't touch it. Just leave it alone. That is the best response that I can give you. So when you're washing your skin, be really gentle with how much you're, you know, tugging your skin because that could irritate your skin. So you wanna really think of your skin since it's really sensitive, like a baby. You wouldn't be going around with your baby Maybe just treating it as if it's like a, a rag, like a piece of cloth. No, you would be very gentle. Unless you hate babies, then you would I'm just kidding. Treat babies very nicely. They're our future. So anyways, enough with the weird analogy. Going back, you really want to be gentle with your skin. I don't want to see you doing this. Uh-uh, don't do that. You want to pat when you're washing your face. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you're using products in your skincare routine that don't contain irritating ingredients. Like for example, cleansers, usually most of them have SLS, which is sodium lauryl sulfate. That is very known by science to be irritating to your skin. Also fragrance, I literally say that in every video of mine. You want to make sure that the products that you're using do not contain that. Also, you 
you might want to stay away or at least very like dip your toes very slowly into active ingredients and really strong ingredients like for example your retinols basically all the active ingredients that come in a serum form it's a marathon it's not a speed what's what's the saying it's it, it's a marathon it's not a sprint there we go it's a marathon it's not a sprint anyways moving along to question number eight how do we know if a product is good for me <laughs> Okay, so there's really no answer to this. Honestly, you won't know if a product is good for you, like, unless you try it. Like, you just gotta go ahead, buy it. You wanna try it for maybe, like, two slash three weeks and really see how your skin reacts. Like, for example, like, I know that my skin purges, so sometimes when I'm using a product, I will break out for the first week and then it will be all good. But if you're still breaking out after two slash three weeks or you see that your skin is, you know, like, maybe tingling quite a lot, like it's an unbearable tingle, or also your skin is irritated and red, then that is probably a sign that that product could be either too harsh for you or maybe it's too strong for your skin to handle so you want to go start slower or maybe you just don't tolerate it and so really just cut it off now question number nine you guys how do you even have the audacity to ask this question anymore honestly i am fed up i might as well just throw the phone i'm not gonna though because it's expensive how many times do i have to tell you yes you do have to i'm gonna start clapping my hands once again you have to wear your spf every day period no questions asked nothing I do not want to hear this no more. I'm done. I'm tired. You're probably tired of hearing this. SPF every day, period. Stop playing. Ooh, so question number 10 and the final question is how do I figure out my skin type? No, 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 no. I honestly get you where you're coming from. Like, I've honestly struggled with this myself for several years. As a matter of fact, yes. So it can be very confusing because there are many different types of skin. However, to just boil it down and make it simple, there are four types. There is normal skin and honestly, you're basically blessed by the gods, okay? Everybody hates you because you have perfect skin. This is the person that has perfect, amazing skin and when you ask them what their skin Skincare is they honestly just answer oh my god I use like shampoo as a cleanser and then maybe like I moisturize once a week and that is it like, I really recommend you use shampoo or conditioner as a cleanser because it's amazing like look at my skin get out get honestly get out and I tried to be nice to you I really did then there is dry skin now dry skin is the so what you really need, what you want to focus on is making sure to hydrate your skin as much as you can. Moisturizers, heavy. You want them to be heavy. Cleansers, you want them to be moisturizing and hydrating. You also might want a hyaluronic acid serum. That could be like very good from hydration. We all know that. And if you didn't know, you're welcome. Then there is oily skin. All my oily skin people in the club say hi. I say now we really drink it. Strawberries. And trust me, it's a struggle. As much as dry skin, what you want is basically to focus on products that are actually like gonna calm down your oils. So for example, the Niacinamide Plus Zinc specifically from The Ordinary that is really good at oil control. Or you maybe wanna try applying some jojoba oil at the end of your skincare routine on your face. And just a little bit like five drops and then all over just pat it on your skin. Jojoba oil is the closest to your sebum. So what is that gonna do is it's gonna balance out the sebum production of your skin. Throughout the day, you won't produce as much sebum as you usually do. I got you, I know I got you. But also, compared to a dry skin person, you want a cleanser that is more like stripping, okay? Like I'm putting in quotes because you don't want to strip its moisture, you just want to strip out the sebum, okay? So maybe like a harsher cleanser, like for example, the foaming cleanser, as I told you guys before. That is what you want. Then there is sensitive skin. I already answered that question. And a way to test what skin type you really have is you just want to cleanse your skin and then you just do not apply nothing, like nothing at all for about like two, three hours. And then you go in the mirror and see if your skin skin is shiny. If it's shiny, that means it's oily. If it's like more dry and you can feel it that it's tight, or maybe you can just use the toilet paper and then you just pat it. If you don't see any oil on the toilet paper, that means you have dry skin. If you don't have nothing at all, like no oiliness, but it's also not feeling tight, then that means you have normal skin and you're blessed. And then if you can see some oils on the toilet paper, then you know that you have oily skin. Anyways, yeah, we got through them. Ah! Honestly, I'm so sorry for how long this video is, but I just had to give you the tea. Like, I really wanted to be informative and packed with information so you guys can know better. If you're still watching this far, honestly, you just need a Nobel Prize. Choose between a Nobel Prize and an Emmy Prize because how did you sit through all this? Okay.
But if you're still watching, I just want you to comment down below if you knew the answers to all the questions or which questions specifically you didn't know the answer of or maybe if I taught you anything new. Anyways, randoms, y'all know what time it is now. Look, look, what time is it? By the way, do you like my bracelets? They're not real diamonds. Chill, calm down. Okay, you can sit back down because I could see you there getting heated thinking that I was flexing on you. I ain't flexed on you because I got nothing to flex, <laughs> okay? But anyways, it is now time for the Italian word of the video. And since this video was all about answering these 10 most asked skincare questions of 2019, then the Italian word of the video is going to be dieci, which is 10 in English. Anyways, girl, I'm gonna wrap this video up because I'm actually quite late for a lecture, like it's 5.48 p.m. if you can, uh, can you tell? It, yeah, so I have a lecture at 6. <laughs> so I have to get there, I have to get ready because right now like, I'm in a top, tank top. And we's in England, so I can't go with that in a tank top, in a lecture, uh-uh, I can't do that, simply cannot. But sis, you, I know that you don't gotta do nothing. Uh-huh, I know that you're just chill, sitting down, and honestly, I envy you. And even if you have to do something, maybe, that, honestly, you can just postpone that for 20 minutes. Just enough time for you to watch another one of these videos. I I'm gonna make it real easy. All you gotta do is literally click one of these two videos. No brain power at all. They're gonna be amazing, super fun. Just watch them. Oh, remember to be random, though. Always be random.